This is Scott Grant, and I'm here today with Reggie Hayward and Megan Hayward. And I've been trying to get you guys on the show for a while. I'm really excited that you're here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. One of our most favorite celebrity couples. In the <laughs> <community>. <laughs> well, you know, I've been wondering who is now the most famous person, and, and it, it may be Reggie. Oh. Uh, yeah. it, it, it may be Reggie at this point. I mean, did Fred Taylor move away? Did Well, he's not <laughs> been on the show yet. Oh, he hasn't, huh? No, no. We no. got to get him out here then. I would like that, obviously. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to interview get Fred in here. Now, you played for the Broncos and the Jags. I did. How many years? Uh, I played a total of 10 years. Is that a. Sounds to me like that's a fairly long career. It is. It's above average. The average uh, career is like two to three years. And uh, that's how long or how fast you can get out the NFL. Like uh, you get a year to show yourself and then maybe two more years to try to prove it and then they get rid of you. And you had, I think, uh, your best seasons were with the Jags. It looked to me like. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. I had some pretty hot ones. I, I was I was rolling when I finished up with the Broncos in 04. I had eight and a half sacks, and then I came to the Jaguars, and then I had, uh, no, I take that back. I had ten and a half sacks, then I came to the Jaguars, I had eight and a half sacks my first year in 05, and then I ruptured my Achilles the next year, and that kind of slowed slowed me down a little bit, but I got back on track. And did you come back? Did you play another season after? Yeah, I played two more seasons after. Okay. I, yeah, they still wow. they, they couldn't get rid of me. They couldn't Not get rid of me. Not too many people can come back from a ruptured Achilles. No, it's, a, it's a, special care. It's a tough one. No, I mean, like, um... I was able to play. I was able to. to I, I was able to beat people that were trying to take my job. But I wasn't as fast and as nifty as I was before I ruptured my Achilles. Mm -hmm. But I was still better than the people that they had coming in to see if they could replace me. And that's important. I don't have to be first. Just can't be last. And when you're when you're sitting there and you're saying, is that is that your attitude? That you see the new guys coming into camp and it's like that guy's trying to take my job. Oh yeah, I mean like. Um, and, and and nothing against that person. You 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 have to understand that it's just it's business, and they're trying to provide for their family. And I never held it against anyone. It's just one of those things where you know that you have to earn a position. And when you have to earn a position, it makes you work harder. If you if I knew that I was just going to come in and I was just going to be able to have a position and a paycheck, um, you can get lazy if you're not, you know, trying to be great. You well, know? How important is the paycheck versus the position? The paycheck is the position. I mean, the paycheck is everything. Like, I, when I got started, you know, someone, Rod Smith told me, Shannon Sharp told me, you know, a lot of people lead a game with only two things. They leave with memories and they leave with money. And most people only leave with memories. So make sure that you, you know, have some memories, of course. If you do this long enough, you're going to have some memories. But make sure you make them pay you because you're putting a lot on the line and your body, your life, your uh, time with family, uh, lead this game with more than just memories. And a, a lot of guys, I mean, that's a kind of recurring theme, right? I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of guys who play, and not just in the NFL, but professional sports generally, end up um, bankrupt. Is that fair? It's very fair. It's very fair. I mean, it's a, lar it's a large percentage of, you got to understand, most professional athletes are young people. Right. And then you have a large percentage of people, not necessarily um, – the athletes are out there spending money or throwing it down the drain. A large percentage of people are preying on these professional athletes because they're true? young. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Like uh, shady uh, business investments, um, trying to get them to buy products as far as annuities and all stuff that may be trash, but they get a big paycheck off those. And you we know? talk, you know, I'm in that business. We yeah. talk a lot about the annuities. Annuities are expensive. Exactly. You know, there's there's a reason that um, the commission is so high. And it, it, it's that I think a lot of people wouldn't sell that product if the commissions weren't so high. Exactly. So, you know. It, there are probably worse things that get thrown at some of these guys, right? I mean, oh, invest yeah. in my restaurant, invest in my. Did you have people like that well, pounding after you to, to invest in in things? Megan's laughing. If you want to jump I mean, in. like, <laughs> it's the whole, it's the whole. When you, when you have nothing and you come into some money, then your whole family, everyone has a great idea. Like, everyone has, you know what? I had this great idea. Let's start a uh, line care, you know, company. And, you know, you buy all the equipment and I will do all the work and then uh, watch it grow. And uh, as a young person that wants to help out then and stuff. Then they realize they don't like doing lawn care. Yeah, they realize <laughs> that lawn care takes a lot of work and it's kind of difficult and it's not for them. But, you know, as the young athlete, I spend all the money and I don't see that back. 
it's got to be hard to say no to your family and friends, kids you grew up with, brothers, sisters, cousins, that kind of thing, right? Oh, it was hard at first, and then they became you. You get practice, and it becomes live. Oh, y'all, no, yeah, no, yes, I'm, I'm and, a master at it. And then there's also people that are actually on the leagues, like the different leagues, like approved list for financial people. Until they find out that they're stealing money and then they get off the approved list But if you're a 21 year old coming into millions for the first time you go with the approved list from the NFL or the NBA and Then that person steals from you was that is is that is that list from the NFL or from the NFL Players Association? Um, It is from the NFL I believe yeah, NFL, NFL yeah, it's from the Players I think Association. It's the Players Association. Yeah, because yeah. the NFL doesn't want to get its hands yeah. dirty with but that. But the NFLPA, even when they get their hands or not, not get their hands dirty, but when they f- when they figure out somebody's stealing, they just send out an email and say this person is no longer approved. Oops. But when you're a 21, 22 year old coming into money and you don't come from money, you don't know what to do with it. You think going to the league's approved list will be your safest bet until that person steals millions. Yep. There's just no way to know who to trust. Yeah, no, no. I, read a, I read something, some sort of scandal about that um, maybe as much as 10 years ago, maybe maybe as little as three. Yep. Uh, but um, I did read an article about that, and it was I'm pretty sure it's the NFL Players Association, and a big-name player was associated with it. Um, I can't um, remember who now. Maybe we can look that up. Yeah, we could try. Come we could try. After some music. When, when we come back, let's let's talk some more, a little bit more about football, and then let's talk about some other things. All right. I thought love was only for true and fairy tales, and for someone else, but not for me. Our love was out to get me. That's the way it seemed. Disappointment haunted all my dreams Then I saw her face Now I'm a believer Not a trace Put out in my mind I've been alone I'm a believer I couldn't leave her if I tried I thought love with more I got What's the use in trying When all you get is pain When I needed sunshine I got rain Then I saw her face Now I'm a believer Not a trace A doubt in my mind I'm in love I saw her face Now I'm a believer Not a trace Put out in my mind I'm in love I'm a believer I couldn't leave her if I tried Yes, I saw her face Now I'm a believer Scott Grant here, and I'm with uh, Reggie Hayward uh, of the Denver Broncos and the Jacksonville Jaguars. And his wife. Yeah, she's here, too. It's a couple's interview. You're absolutely correct. (laughs) It it is. Maybe we should have Mary Whitman Ortiz. Sorry, I begged for your wife to come also because, you know, I like the banter. Well, she's the brains of the organization. You've got to have the brains. I wanted Megan for sure, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you're an athlete. I am. Yeah, I played um, basketball at University of North Florida um, back in the day. Who was the coach then? Uh, Mary Tapmeyer. I remember her. I, I I was trying to remember who that was. I remember her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you, were you good? I mean, obviously you're a good player. You're playing in college. Yeah, yeah. I think I was a good player. Um, I was a three sport athlete going into college, and um, 
I transferred in from a junior college, and uh, yeah, I, I like to think I was I was quite an athlete. Phenomenal. I was a, quite an phenomenal. athlete. What, 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 so were, humble. what were the three sports? Uh, volleyball, basketball, and track. Okay. Makes yeah, I did sense. the pentathlon, volleyball. Wow. Well, track, I've got to yeah. know how in the world did, did the two of you guys meet? And she stalked me. I did uh, not. Still, I did oh my not. God. You can. You well, I'm sure you had. Some you can read. Yeah, you can, we did. You I can did. read about it. She online. was one of many. Oh, oh, yeah, she was one of Every many. Every date they went on is online. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, no, not quite. But yeah. <laughs> she posts a lot of stuff about us, and you can see a lot of stuff on her social media. We're just a cute couple that's happy. We're blessed. Yeah. Yeah. People no. often talk about how, what a wonderful couple you are and how much you're in love. That's what I always mm -hmm. hear um, about you from people that we mutually know. Yeah, they don't. They don't live with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you guys have your moments with your yeah. Home. No, but we're 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 in love, and and what we try to do is we just try to keep it happy and keep it fresh. We don't try to you know change it too much. But um, right now we've been rolling for eight years and it's just been great. And we, uh, like any relationship, it has its ups and its downs. But we really have more ups than downs. Well, if you've yeah. made it past the seven year mark, yeah, you're doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that is a good. Uh, that's a good point. Seven mm -hmm. years. Uh, yeah. uh, and have you had you both been married before? Or? First time. Neither First time. Of yeah. Neither one of you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And we have we have five children total. Reggie had four before I met him, and then oh. I had one. And so we kind of came in with a ready-made big family. Yeah, it's blended. It's a beautiful bunch. blended. Yeah, yeah, it's blended family. Yeah. Well, I've met uh, your family. Your kids are delightful. Thank oh, you. Thank, thank you. you. That's a lot of hard work. It's a lot yeah. of um, We're actually hard work. even thinking about, uh, you know, what kind of things maybe uh, get Sandra doing with at least one of those kids. Because I think um, your kids would be a good influence on, on my kids and on Jennifer's kids. <laughs> <laughs> so you may hear us go like, hey. Uh, so let us know. You need your own reality show. Uh, we've heard that before. We've been pitched. <laughs> we've had have been, been pitched. We've been pitched, and I just you know I turned it down. I, I would turn it down every single time. It's just it, it's, too invasive. It, it's, it is. It is. It's, it's all right to you know come and do a show and to be out in the public, but when you bring it into your home, it's it's it's, it's like having a remodel of your home. It's someone always there. It's someone doing something when you just want peace and quiet, yeah. and I, I I don't want all that. Oh, it yeah. would be so popular. <laughs> it would be fun because we would make it hilarious, but it just it seems like time consuming, and I like to yeah. walk around naked and drink, so okay. well, I don't be, think that's that good be, enough uh, for TV. That could be on the television. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, special channels for that. Right. I yeah. don't know. I think you guys would be really good. Um, I'm a, I'm concerned from my knowledge of of uh, reality television that you might be too normal. Yeah. yeah, we're not weird enough, are we? We're not. You know, I did a TV show one time. I yes, was on one she's a celebrity. No, Should I talk about? Celebrity. Let's talk about this. <laughs> oh yeah, you know what? You know yes. what? I actually did. I totally forgot about this, but I actually did see this. Yeah. My wife Sharon was convinced that she saw you on some TV show, and I went to check, and you was not you. But in checking, I did see you were on. Like a game show, yeah. Like Steve you Austin, wrestle somebody yeah. or something. Yeah, I did see that. <laughs> what episode? Come on, plug so, it. This is Steve, Ops, Steve Austin's Broken Skull Challenge. I was on episode eight of the first season. And um, this is the wrestling guy, right? Yeah, Stone, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. yeah, that was that was invasive enough for me. Five, like okay. I think it was five days of shooting, and it was exhausting. And when, that's actually when we got pitched. Yeah, well, I was doing that's that when show. We got pitched for the, um, yeah, and. After five days of that, I was like, no, no, yeah. thank you. <laughs> to be yeah. always on and you, in character. Yeah. And yes. you, you kind of wrestled with somebody? Is that, tell yeah. us about that, because I, 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 now I can kind of half yeah. visualize this in my head. <laughs> paint, what, paint the picture of the, the show. Picture. All right, so uh, there was eight girls, and you go up against one each round, and the person you be, you know, gets knocked out. In the last round, it was me and another girl, and... Um, you have to go through like an obstacle course kind of, and then you wrestle at the end, and whoever goes out of the circle loses. And it lasted about two seconds yeah. <laughs> because like the sumo, the sumo type yeah, the, ring yeah, the with the rope. Yeah, yeah. and, I, and uh, I tried to tackle her, and she went out immediately. Yeah. Well, no, no, you gotta, you gotta tease it a little oh, bit. I'm Don't sorry, tell I'm them sorry. the end, but <laughs> you gotta watch it. It's amazing. It's amazing. It was fun to watch because I didn't like. She was there. She couldn't tell me anything about it. Like, I'm like, what are you mm -hmm. doing? What is going on? He's like, you're on a weird sex show, you're aren't a, you? Yeah. You're, <laughs> you're like, you're in a weird part of the country doing weird things. Our relationship can't handle this. And she was like, look, it's going to be amazing. You just have to tune in. So, you know, I was patient and I watched. And it was, it's, it's a great, it was a great show. It was, it was a great show. Well, now you, now you have me wanting to see more of the show. Um, I may have actually, did you post like a little clip of it? That's where yeah, I saw it. That's where I saw yeah. it. Yeah. It was a teaser. See, yeah, highlights. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. Let's come back. We'll talk some more uh, with uh, Jacksonville's uh, most beloved couple. <laughs> <laughs> All 
So, hi, Scott Grant here, and I'm with uh, Megan Hayward. Mm-hmm. Hi. There you go. And Reggie Hayward. Yes. And in the break, we're talking about the fact that, it, like, every time you guys are interviewed, they really just want to talk to Reggie about football. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Rightfully so. <laughs> football's interesting, but I think together you guys are, are kind of more interesting than uh, either yeah. of you separately. Yeah, to be a power couple, you have to be a couple. You can't just have him. Yeah. Are now, you, you guys are a vegan couple. We are a vegan Well, I like to say plant-based yes. because vegan is... A outs- religion. Well, it's, <laughs> it's just it outside. The, it's, it's more outside the diet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You can't have leather clothing. You you can't... You oh, know, okay. the, the, the cosmetics and stuff. And I'm, I'm not that... I'm not that versed in, in that. I just don't eat meat and I try to stay with plants, so... And what made you stop eating meat? Well, you know, just health issues, you know. Uh, playing football... They said protein on the brain, CTE, all these things, brain fog. It was like, look, let's let's attack this right now. Let's not let's not you know pray for the best. Let's go out and be aggressive. What can I do to make myself feel better? What can I do to you know stay sharp in an older age? And taking some of those things out of my diet has improved my overall health. Uh, the, the pain in the body and stuff like that, and just trying to stay healthy. Yeah, a lot of pain. A lot of mm. the pain in the mornings has gone away yeah. since we switched and stuff like that. Inflammation. Um, yeah. When did you switch? How long have you been on the? Uh, almost three years. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we've been we've been plant based almost three years, but it was a slow transition. Yeah. We we were eating plant based meals back in like 2012, 2013, but we just fully switched in 2017. Yeah. And you don't look like you're skipping any meals. No, not no. at all. Not at all. <laughs> you I mean, look great. Like, if you do this the wrong way, you will gain a ton of weight because there's, a, there's just so much bread and stuff out you there that you can eat. You can eat French fries all day, every day. All, they're yeah, they're you know vegan. I mean? <laughs> Mashed potatoes, all the things that you, you know, if, 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 I put it, if I say these are vegan French fries, no one will eat them. They're just regular French fries. All you got to do is say vegan. And fr- hey, these are vegan French fries. What does that mean? That's a good one. I don't want them. You know what I mean? So if, that's a little trick. If you don't want to share anything, just put vegan in front of it. But um, just it's a lot of starch, a lot of carbs out there. And you can gain weight 
and everything. Like it's more protein in plants than you'll get in a, some some well beans. It's yeah. more proteins in beans than you'll get in a steak. So just be careful out there. Uh, and do you give advice to people do you, on, on on what and how to eat? If if they ask, you know, most people don't want to hear it, and I respect that. I'm not trying to force this on anyone. I, I give my heavier friends. You know, a couple of pointers and stuff like that. Like, look, if you want to push back on the weight a little bit, feel a little bit healthier. But we live in Jacksonville. And uh, it's like, you know, football, steak, and beer. And barbecue. Yeah, and barbecue. So I don't want to, like, this isn't something I'm just going to, I'm not going to get a whole lot of following on this subject. So I leave it alone. Well, people actually kind of get violent sometimes. Uh, probably yeah. not just here, but but I, I've, I notice it here about... Um, like meatless uh, burgers, yeah, you know, like like it's some sort of a communist plot, yeah, to, <laughs> yeah, to overthrow America, right? It is, yeah. And even, I mean, even some of the ve- the militant vegans, you know, is what we call them. Like, um, they hate people that eat meat. They can't, you know, they can't even speak to them and stuff like that. And we, because we changed more for health reasons, we're not, we don't really hate people that eat meat. I mean, no. saving animals and the moral side effects are very nice. It's, yeah, but it's a beautiful thing. It, but... Like our main reason was health, and yeah. so. We've become more more morally aware as we've done it. I think meat eaters are under attack right now because there there is a vegan push, there is a plant based push. You know, plant you know Beyond Burger and all this stuff. And you know, if you eat meat, it's almost like they're attacking. You know how I've been raised and what I enjoy, and people don't like to feel under attack. No, they don't. Uh, and I think a lot of us feel under attack um, for different reasons in, in this kind of period in in our history right i mean you know it's a constant kind of like this some guy over there yelling and screaming about masks or uh, meat or it's a hypersensitive world we live in right now that's a good term yeah like everything will trigger what was your major at at, at iowa state football and then i (laughs) minor in sociology but it was primarily football but you know like just being Football has allowed me to be more worldly. I go around, I see different parts of the world, and you meet different cultures, you meet different people, and you understand that we all pretty much want the same thing. We're just going about it in different ways. And um, right now with social media and everything, everyone has an opinion, and everybody's opinion pisses other people off. And now you can express your opinion without the backlash of you know someone you know confronting you on that on, on that on that opinion immediately. You can press something on Facebook and get off. And it could be a hailstorm after that first comment of, of comments underneath. But you're not looking at that. You're out there playing golf. Yeah. And so, like, you know, you just have to be careful about what you put out there and what you bring in. Well, and I think in your position, that's got to be especially true, right? I mean, you don't want to be saying anything that would certainly be libelous, for instance. Yeah. Uh, uh, you'd, you'd have a target on your back. Well, you know, I have a lot of people that – don't know me but they know me as far as sports and i don't want to go around losing people that you know it's hard to be a role model and i don't want to go around uh losing like people that were in love with me because i played sports by you know saying something that may be offensive like i I don't want to mix the worlds and you you see yourself as a role model i don't see myself on a day-to-day role model i think that since i played in the nfl we as professional athletes should, you know, put something positive out there for kids because kids look up to professional athletes because one day they want to be one. And I don't want to be one out there that, you know, you see on Sports Center and, and and your coaches, your high school coach or your elementary coach saying, like, you don't want to be like this guy. You know, you want to have a good attitude. You don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to be that person. I don't right. want to be that statistic. So as far as a role model, that's how I go. Okay. I was thinking about, I think it was uh, Barkley. Charles Barkley said he, at some point said he wasn't a role, a yeah, role it was, that yeah. was, And that got a lot of oh. uh, publicity when he said it, right? Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a firestorm. And that was in the, in the back in the day when he was at the top of his game. Yeah. I remember him making that comment. Uh, listen, I want to take a break. And when we come back, I want to talk to you about your Lego collection. Oh, it's, <laughs> now we get into some good stuff. <laughs>
Scott Grant here at Standfast Studios in beautiful downtown Ponte Vedra Beach, and I am with Megan Hayward and Reggie Hayward. Yes. Hello. Hello. How are you guys doing out there? You guys enjoy Ponte Vedra. We love Ponte Vedra. How long have y'all been here? Well, we actually live by the town center in Glen Kernan, but we come down to Ponte Vedra quite often. Oh, well, I would she have been comes mistaken. Down here. Yeah. She, she lives at the spa. I don't live at the <laughs> spa. Oh, which spa do you go to? Ponte Vedra Inn and Spa. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like a nice place. And, oh the Mary, and the Marriott Sawgrass Spa. We, which, whatever one they can get in. Yeah, whichever one we feel like going to that yeah. day. Now, before the break, I told the audience that we were going to talk about your uh, Reggie's Legos. Yeah. And uh, Megan, feel free to chip in with any thoughts you have on the Legos, which could be different than Reggie. Yeah. I don't know. I'll, I'll let her start with it because she well, – explain why I got into Legos, why it, why it, why it become a thing. Yeah, so um, going for all the head concussion um, – treatment i guess throughout the years talking to different doctors they kept telling us that he needed to get something for his brain help it be active help him work through problems things of that nature they mentioned puzzles they mentioned um building i don't know what you call them the not the legos but like the connectic kind of stuff or legos and so we had already done puzzles quite a bit mm -hmm. and he, we liked them we did them with the kids mm -hmm. and he was like well let's try a lego so we i think yeah. we started off with like a star wars lego or something yeah. and uh i mean you got a huge you got a couple huge i know my son is is jealous as all get yeah. out you got a couple of huge star wars legos right? uh, you know what and uh the reason why I have these huge ones is like they're like what do my family be like what should we buy you for Christmas or your birthday like I don't know okay. what to get this guy he has everything and I was like hey just give me a Lego you know and if if you really love me give me a big Lego and some of them have came through with some very nice Legos they were gifts and uh well, those big Legos aren't cheap. No, they're not. They're expensive. I mean, it's, they're hundreds of dollars. Yeah. I, 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 I got a kid that is a Lego fanatic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, besides just uh, brain stuff, which I did get into Legos for, I got into it because my kids, my youngest son, Israel, he does them. And it was like a bonding thing between me and him. And sometimes we would do them together. Sometimes we would compete to see who could build one the fastest. And it's just, it's just grown. Like, I had to... Um, remodeled the house just to put some of these legos on the wall because as I've, I've gotten it's gotten out of hand it's got it's maybe a problem <laughs> it may be a problem it, it may be a problem but i don't hear megan saying it's a problem so no. if it were i'm sure megan would be telling us right now that this yeah, is, a problem. is is it a problem this is your this is your <laughs> opportunity to it yeah. was a problem when they took up an entire room of the house, but now that we have a Lego wall instead yeah. of a Lego room, I am a lot more happy. Have you noticed the improvement in cognition? Um, I don't know. Have we? No, I wouldn't say it's been a huge <laughs> cognitive improvement, but um, it's definitely given him a hobby, yeah. which has been more beneficial than anything, I think. Like, whether or not it improves his cognitive function is less an impact than, you know, it gives him something to do. It gives him something to look forward to. He's enjoying building them. He can take his time. No stress. And he, he seems to really like it. Yeah. yeah. Now, let's go back a second. The doctors suggested this. So you had had some head concussions? Yeah, of course, I've had. Yes. And I, I guess everybody that's playing football has had concussions. Yeah, right? when I was playing, like, the definition of a concussion was is, is a million miles from what it is now. Like, a concussion was you officially sleep on the field or knocked out to the point where you lose consciousness right. now it's like if you hear ringing in your ears if you feel a slight pain a headache that's a concussion and it's that was just getting your bell rung when we were growing up it's like oh he has a ringer and then they would slap your helmet right yeah, Yay, yeah. And it was like, like are you better and they would slap the helmet and like yeah yeah coach is like all right get back in the game so um probably had you know a hundred or so of those so oh, wow yeah just from being a child and you know i played i started football in 1986 when i was right. seven and I, I ended it when i was 32 so that's a lot of football that's and a, lot, and of a lot of opportunities to get your head oh yeah, yeah. A, ringer. A, a ringer a ringer yeah, a ringer. we don't even know oh, how many that, that just makes my heart hurt yeah, yeah we don't even know how many concussions he had in the league because they didn't count they them didn't as classi concussions they didn't so classify. we don't even well, know well, i know that you know i know that that stuff changed i i I coached soccer for a long time. I coached girls, and later I coached boys. The boys, frankly, was better coaching the girls. Yeah. Um, but the, even during that time, you know, the concussion protocol changed numerous times yeah. uh, to the point where, like, if you know they bang their head, you were supposed to take them out of the game, send yeah. them to. A, they were going to take headers out of the game, weren't well, they? Well, they did. Yeah. And I, to honestly, and I, you know, I don't, I don't really like that. I would sit on the sidelines. Uh, when my daughter played, when I coached the girls, they had headers. When I mm. do it with my son, there's no headers under 12, I think. 
And and that's nice. The problem is then the ball is bouncing everywhere up, up around people's heads, and so then they're kicking at it now above kicking. their head, which is a in soccer called a high kick. Yeah. It's a penalty. Uh, somebody's too close to you. But I guess would watch these games and go like sooner or later one of these kids is going to kick the other kid in the head, and I'm mm-hmm. not sure that that's going to be a whole lot better than having the ball it bounce, bounce off, off their head exactly. But yeah. uh, obviously people put thought into it because that was all over. Uh, the United States under a certain age, no more headers. Yeah, yeah, it's it's getting a lot of publicity right now. Um, the yeah. concussion stuff is primarily because of the NFL, but soccer's hearing a lot of it too. I mean, it was from the movie Concussion with Will Smith, and everybody started like, "We got a, we got a." Oh, like I, I, I left that movie theater with a headache. Uh, like I was like, <laughs> man, like so, like we got like just a a bulldozer of information in a you know two hour movie. Like, and uh, I'm pretty sure this is information that. People may have had, but didn't want it to come out. It does not help so sports. I want to take a break. Um, before I do, I want to ask you one more question. What's the largest Lego you have? Oh, I had a Millennium Falcon. It's like oh, 7,500 pieces. It, wow. it weighs about, I would say, 20, 25 pounds. It's, 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 it took me a while to do. I like took a Lego break after I finished that one. I was like, I, I need a break. I, I've seen that one because my son, uh, when I was at your house that one day, dragged me upstairs to yeah. show me <laughs> the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's a beauty. It's a beauty. All right, we'll come back. We'll talk about uh, uh, you guys some more. All right.
Hi, Scott Grant here, and I'm with uh, Reggie Hayward and mm -hmm. Megan Hayward, and it's really, um, I can't tell you how excited I am that you're here. Oh, thank I'm, you. I'm scared. I can feel it in my stomach. I can feel it in my stomach all day. I've been nervous about having you guys on because <laughs> I, I really want the show to be good, and I really like you both. Oh, appreciate it. So um, let's let's talk, change topics a little bit. Let's All talk right. about something that maybe is a little bit uncomfortable. Let's talk a little bit about race and, and race relations in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, you're an African American. I, I believe I am. <laughs> Last time I checked, I believe, yeah. let me look. Uh, and and what's that? I mean, what? How, and you're married to Megan. Megan's I am Caucasian. Yeah. What's that like? Uh, what's it like here in Jacksonville? Oh, well, first of all, it's it's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, my wife is wonderful. She takes care of me. She looks after me. Um, being a uh, interracial couple, it, 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 I don't think it's really struck home too hard. I mean, we have our moments. I think we experience those moments more on the internet than we do in everyday life. So, what do you what do you mean by more on the internet? Well, you will have people um, say nasty things. Oh God! Over, yeah. Primarily over, to me. Yeah, over. Yeah, over. Yeah, my wife has received a lot of you know negative messages. Just when posting I, pictures. I believe that. I, yeah. And I'm sorry for that. But I, I never... One of the things that fascinates me is that it, when I get into these topics, um, I'm sheltered a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm definitely a beneficiary of white privilege. I mean, and 10 years ago, I don't think I would have said that. I mean, it's something I've come to realize more recently. I mean, I went to an Ivy League college. I went to law school. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I imagine people say just awful things. Yeah, yeah no. and it doesn't happen super often, but it definitely has happened since we've been together. And is it polarized, or do you get it equally from both sides? Um, it's primarily white men. Um. Uh, it's primarily white men that are upset that I'm married to a black man, and uh, it's pretty funny when it happens, actually, because um, they, they don't have the courage to say anything to our faces ever, and it's usually people I don't even know. It's, it's random just people. just random strangers. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, it could be fake profiles. You never know. It, it, it's just it's people are safe when they can write comments in their computer at home. Well, yeah, and, and you know, the early days of, of kind of social media, a lot of the stuff was um, anonymous. Yeah. Uh, you know, and people would say just awful things mm -hmm. i remember about the time my son is born he's 14 i go and i start playing chess on an online chess site yeah and i'm just playing chess and one day i wander into uh because i'm wondering what they are like the you know the chat rooms yeah and this is a chess site so presumably right you know you, you, you're talking about chess it's going to be boring yeah. stuff yeah. right it wasn't i mean it was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was awful and i even said i and then everyone attacked me as soon as i said hey you know this is a chess site you shouldn't be saying this kind of stuff oh. you know you're having sexual conversations or yeah. Yeah. saying racial things Those about chess people man oh a well, bunch it, of perverts by the way, <laughs> by the way if it was like that on a chess site imagine what it was like on you know, some other site. yeah, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> no it's just like being you know an interracial couple we 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 see it but we do a good job of of like you're going to have issues. Somebody's going to have an issue with you no matter what you do. If you're successful, they're going to have an issue with that. If you're down on your luck, they're going to have an issue with that. It's just people out there, and you just got to learn how to stay away from negative stuff and keep it positive. Yeah. yeah it's sad. I'm, I'm, I'm sad that that happens. I will say this. Um, you guys first meet me, I think, because I do this presentation on 1964 on the civil rights movement here yeah. in this area. And we did a presentation at the Beaches Museum uh, which was pretty well attended, about 150 people. Um, and then immediately afterwards, we got anonymous um, comments and th and even Hate kind mail. of threats. Yeah. Yeah. Threats? Even oh, kind of yeah. threats, right? Yeah. I mean, the one guy says to me, if you see me coming, you better run and find a place to hide. Wow. Mm -hmm. Just because you're giving a little bit of history. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, it was, you know, I gave that speech down in St. Augustine once, and as I was leaving, it was the homeless guys, and the, uh, the one guy asked me if I was a congressman, remember? And I was like, oh, no, I'm you know, just a history guy. And then he says, why don't you do the white history? Right? And oh, so okay. I was like, remember that one? Or I don't think you were there for that. Uh, my family was there. You were there, but we weren't there when that when the guy. Because there's said two that. different kinds of history, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, obviously, they're different. not intertwined. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Um, that's actually some truth to it. It's yeah. also a it's also a sad sort of uh, commentary on the on, yeah. on where we live. Yeah. Are you guys were you guys familiar with any of the stuff that went on down here uh, back probably before you were born? In the right? good old days of Florida. No. 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 I'm from East Tennessee, I'm so from we Chicago. had our own. We had our own history that oh, we, yeah. we learned about in you know, the mountains. Yeah, yeah, in the mountains. And I'm from Chicago, Illinois, so I grew up, you know, um, 
it's it's, it's pretty diverse. My high school was, you know, diverse and everything. So it like and then going to college at Iowa State University, I got slammed into, you know, white USA. So was it was it a pretty oh yeah, it must have been a pretty Iowa. school. Yeah, yeah, Iowa. So I mean it was a great school and I, I wouldn't change it for anything. Like I didn't even experience much racism in Iowa because maybe, you know, being a football player, maybe being, you know, somewhat of a, you know, star player, they everyone loves the star player. And in Jacksonville, it's been pretty good. It's just, you know. But you, I think we're a little insulated from it because yeah, you played football. Exactly. And I a lot tell, of red carpet going yeah. on. Yeah, and I tell people that all the time. Like, we don't experience normal amounts of racism yeah. because of who he is. Yeah. Um, where people would probably not be happy with, you know, an interracial couple. But, they give him a pass because he played yeah, football. But don't don't be. We, we're not going to act like it doesn't exist. We, we know it's out there. We see it. You can, you can if you, you can want. You can feel it. If you want to, you know log on and look at it you can you you actively have to avoid it so i mean we're in tune with what's going on in the world that's yeah. awful it's awful you have to put up with that but there is um and it, do you think it's worse in the like say the last uh four years not to us it hasn't been i think there's a lot more fear in the last four years for some reason and i'm a big believer in all the bad decisions we make are fear-based mm -hmm. and so anything that's going on wrong in the world is because of a fear that you have and I think that right now, as a country, there's a lot of fear happening, and um, oh, that's yeah. causing so yeah. many of the problems. I think people are shocked that, you know, this stuff is still going on. Like, a lot of people, you know, white America, they didn't think that this was a real deal. I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay, you know, and let's we'll take a break. Let's pick up right there when we come back. Sugar. Hi, Scott Grant here from beautiful downtown Ponte Vedra Beach, and I'm with Jennifer Price. Oh, I'm still here. Hey. And Megan Hayward and Reggie Hayward. Nice. And it's really super to have you guys. Now, uh, during the break, we were talking about fake news. There's yeah. a lot of it out there. Yeah. A ton of it. A ton. And, and it's funny how it's, it's curved to what you believe in. Your fake news is not maybe the same as someone else's fake news. Well, no, absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, you know, you people find a story with a headline, and the headline... Um, expresses 
their opinion. Yes. Um, doesn't matter. Sometimes you go to the body of some of those stories and you're like, you know, obviously the person never read this because yeah. if they had. They would see where it's going. Or, you know, that it was entirely different than what the headline yeah. said. Yeah. Or sometimes it's just written in such bad English. And I wonder, you know, could, could anybody read this and yeah. think it was real? It's yeah. amazing how, how many people read the header, but they never like, you know, or read the article. And they never really do any research. They never go and say, you know, let me fact check this and see if this is actually true. They'd be like, okay, I read this article. Now I'm informed. Now I can go out and have an argument. And I have a lot of I have a lot of Facebook friends that do that. They'll read you know on both sides. They'll read an article from head to toe and, and take it as fact, and and argue. And it's like you know when when do we stop doing research? When do we stop looking up and making sure that things are credible? And you know another part of this whole thing that we've noticed, especially since the last election, maybe a little bit before that, but people delete Facebook friends that don't agree with them. Oh so yeah. So yeah. then the only thing they're seeing is stuff that aligns with their belief system. And so it's easy for them to keep perpetuating that same belief system to others. And, you know, we try to keep people on both sides on our Facebook feed and try to look at both sides of any story because yeah. of our unique backgrounds. Very and, unique. Um, well, you know, one thing that I, I, let me interject here a second. One thing I always say is that no matter what you're talking about, it doesn't matter. It has positives and negatives to yeah. it. Everything has positives and negatives. Uh -huh. And, um, so, you know, sometimes we have to make decisions, you know, which are the positives better than the negatives, the negatives outweigh the positives, mm -hmm. you know, but there's never anything that's cut and dried. But when you look at a lot of these feeds, everybody's, you know, it, cut and dry. You know, my yeah. side's right, the other yeah, side is uh, just stupid. Wrong. Yeah. Just stupid. Uh, if not so morally bankrupt that they, you know, yeah. right. Yeah, and we, I mean, we've noticed a lot that, um, because I come from a very Republican area, a lot of my family members are very, very Republican. He comes from Chicago, obviously very Democratic, blue, his blue family state. very Democratic, and when we came together, you know, and started talking about it, and we know, you know, we know the people on both sides yeah. very intimately, and um, we realized that they have the same moral codes for the most part on both sides of the spectrum. They want the same things. They want safe schools. They want more money. They they want, you know, they, 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 but the way they go about it is different. And the way they think is the right way to go about it is different. And that's where the divide comes. Yeah, it was always, it was always funny to me. I always put it, and this may be politically incorrect. It was like, you know, black people should be, act like Republicans in the sense that you can't go into a black person house and then take $5 out of their pocket without you know, them having a, a, a huge, huge, uh, Whoop de doo. Uh, that's a clean word. Whoop de doo. Uh, okay. -doo. <laughs> and then and then and then white people are like, okay, um, I'm going to vote against my 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 right well not my my um views because one day I see myself as that millionaire. When you need all this social programming, you need all this uh, government help, you're gonna vote against it because you can one day see yourself as a millionaire and you need to vote for that view. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, it's kind of mixed yeah, up. Yeah, and of course the media do does a great job of this because they make it seem like, you know, minorities are the only people on welfare no. and on Medicaid oh, yeah, and things they, like oh, that. that gets sold hard. That gets, oh. and, and the whole exactly. illegal immigrant thing too. You yeah. know, somehow the illegal immigrants are sucking up you know, welfare. Uh, yeah, and there's actually an interesting study that was done um, talking about the Border Patrol. And back before ICE was a thing, when the border was open for Mexico, um, people would actually come over and work yeah. and then just go back home. They didn't want to be over here. Well, and w the more you close the border, the more you force people to bring their entire family because they're not going to just come over here and leave their kids and their moms and everything back on in it was, Mexico. It was, it was easier to come up here and get a paycheck but spend that paycheck in, in Mexico. Mexico because this is more affordable. Right. So you got a lot yeah. more. And, and those guys, you know, often uh, the migrant workers are sending money home. I mean, you see that yeah. uh, at the Western Union locations mm -hmm. in the grocery store. You see that stores. with any country. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, so that's true. The dollar goes farther in those countries and no one wants to stay here with and spend more money yeah and it's ironic that the more you try to close it to prevent people from coming over the more when, people come over and so you're going against your own best interest the more we try to shut the border down and actually yeah. Malcolm Gladwell did a really good job of explaining uh oh uh, here comes Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell <laughs> oh, I, I, like I Malcolm. love Malcolm Gladwell I love Malcolm, Malcolm yeah. Gladwell too uh, we need Gladwell. another show for Malcolm Gladwell <laughs> <laughs> well Malcolm. you guys are invited back I mean you have an open <laughs> invitation so if you you can just tell me we uh, just want to come talk <laughs> <laughs> you tell me next time 
time you're just coming to talk about Malcolm Gladwell, but go ahead, finish that thought. Oh, yeah. So he actually did a really good job of explaining this study in one of his books. And um, it, it was really interesting that the people that, you know, fight the hardest for border patrol, you know, shut the border down, close the border down, don't even look at the ways that actually prevent more people from moving over here. And in their mind, the only way to do it is to shut the border down. But in reality, there's more creative ways to go about it that actually stop the influx of people. And I don't feel like we're very creative anymore with our policies. And that goes on both sides. And, you know, just because somebody else from the other party line came up with something, well, absolutely not, because I, I don't vote for that person. I'm never going to be with that person. No. And, you know, we need to start looking at things from a creative perspective because we do live in 2020 and there is plenty of ways that data can be analyzed to figure out, you know, a different approach and a unique approach that could actually work for where we are now. I think we need to, she said, be progressive, but I think we need to kind of rewind a little bit. Well, remember back in the, like, the 50s and the 60s and the 70s where it was politically incorrect to talk about like politics, religion. Oh and, yeah, my grandmother always said never talk about politics, bad religion, etiquette. It's or bad money. etiquette. No concept of etiquette anymore. No. Or how about the art of debate? We can argue without hate. Uh, yeah. Well, we can't. I mean, we can in some circles, but but, yeah. but generally it's we can't. But it some is. of those some of those lessons we need to get back to. Like we need to, if you have an opinion, it's all right to have an opinion. Just you know, let's keep it to ourselves and let people form their own opinions. At least until we can learn to debate properly as a yeah. society. This is just right. It's it's not even right and wrong anymore. This whole world is I won, you lost. And that's what it's all about. It's all about I won and you lost. I don't care how I did it. And then we send our kids to school with people that have the same views. And then they love and keep around those people with the same views. And Mm -hmm. they never get access to another world out there. And I know Jacksonville does a really good job when they do, I think, the long table. Or the big table? Oh, yeah, I like the long table. Yeah, yeah where they sit event. people across the table from you from the opposite zip code from where you live. And I think that's a beautiful thing because if not, if if they're just a number on a screen or they're just a statistic, you never get to know them. You're never going to agree with them because you have nothing in common with them, you think. But when you get to talk to people and when you get to know people, you realize that we all have a lot of things in common. And instead of seeing our differences, we need to see that we all love our children. We all want food that's on the table. That's a beautiful thought. You know, we all love our children. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I agree with you. I think... If there's any chance for a meeting of the minds, it's going to revolve around the children. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I love conversations with you guys. Oh, thanks. Oh, thank very you. engaging, and you're easy to talk to about any subject. Yeah. We're world. Thank you for coming. Yeah, you guys are yeah. really easy. <laughs> if you have an open invite. We're running out of time today. Uh, we'll be back next week with a different guest, but I would love to have you guys on anytime you want. Yeah. Absolutely. We, yeah, well, you have to figure actually, out. Actually, actually, actually we'll, we'll change the name of the show to the Scott, Reggie, and Megan <laughs> Every week, that's the Scott, Megan, and Reggie show. Oh, yeah. I put my wife in front. You know, I, you know what? You do deserve first billing, Reggie. No, I'm no, sorry. No. I, yeah, Reggie, Reggie, Megan, and Scott no. show. Yeah, yeah, Reggie, Megan, and Scott show. I'm, I'm the low man on the totem pole on this one. The Scott Grant Show is brought to you by Standfast Asset Management of Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. Standfast is a fiduciary asset manager specializing in great American companies. We're proud of our disciplined approach to investing.